Chi Sheng, uh, Simon, Julia, Paul, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm very delighted to be invited to this conference on Wakapu City uh, Living Streets, organized uh, jointly by the Civic Exchange, Community for Road Safety, and Designing Hong Kong. Now, this is a very uh, unique conference, uh, and uh, this venue for the conference, if I may, is a very unique one. So I'm sure this conference will uh, help generate a lot of innovative ideas, enable us to um, really think out of the box, think out of this uh, container box. Um, and I think this conference is timely as the new administration seeks to promote a green transport environment, which certainly uh, should include a pedestrian-friendly uh, dimension. Our goal sounds uh, quite simple, but of course, uh, we do not underestimate the challenges before us, resulting from Hong Kong's rather compact and congested city space and uh, previous policy legacies. So here, I would like to share with you uh, some of my thoughts. Although Hong Kong has a highly efficient and extensive public transport system, which accounts for about 90% of the vehicular trips, actually everyone walks to a different extent each day. According to a study, uh, uh, Travel Characteristics Survey, conducted by the Transport Department last year, about 30% of Hong Kong residents made at least one walk-only trip on a normal weekday. And over 70% of our commuters walked to assess a transport mode and to reach their destination after alighting from vehicles uh, every day. So actually, a lot of people uh, do walk. A walkable city can reduce the use of motorized transport, helping to benefit our air quality and, in turn, our quality of life. On the contrary, uh, but this does not mean uh, that we should do away with public transport. On the contrary, if a densely populated city like Hong Kong is to function well as a walkable city, we must first of all provide an efficient mass transit system so as to free up road space. The entire city should be well served by easily accessible public transport with good intermodal connectivity, and pedestrians should be able to move around, to walk around in a safe and comfortable environment. At the same time, of course, the needs of the elderly and the disabled must be taken, uh, well taken care of. So in other words, we are talking about a system of connectivity and mobility that can facilitate walking as a real and practical choice for most computers. I think this is very important. While Hong Kong can generally fit the bill in terms of public transport accessibility and reliability, I think we need to do much more to make it a truly walkable city. To this end, the government has been putting more emphasis on planning for pedestrians and has set out principles and standards on pedestrian planning and pedestrian facilities in the Hong Kong planning standards and guidelines, which apply to planning studies, the preparation and revision of town plans, and development control. Take, for example, the planning of this new Kai Tak development and the proposed uh, Wu Dong North uh, new development area. Much consideration has been given to promoting a pedestrian-friendly environment through careful planning and provision of adequate pedestrian facilities. In the Kai Tak development, there will be a total of 25 sets of new and enhanced pedestrian links, including subways, footbridges, and footpaths to bring the hinterland of Kai Tak closer together. In the Gudong North new development area, walkways and footpaths, which will be continuous and landscaped, will be provided to create a pleasant walking environment. To promote walkability, we give first priority to the needy ones, especially the elderly and people with disabilities. Last August, the administration announced 
a new policy on universal accessibility, whereby we will retrofit barrier-free access facilities such as lifts to existing public walkways, that is, footbridges, elevated walkways, and subways maintained by the highways department, so as to facilitate access by the public. In parallel, we continue to pursue a pre-existing program of about 170 projects for retrofitting of barrier-free access facilities to meet the requirements of the Equal Opportunities Commission. To minimize vehicle pedestrian conflicts and to improve roadside air quality, the administration is taking forward various schemes to improve pedestrian environment in business districts, shopping centers, and leisure areas with heavy pedestrian flows. The pedestrian environment improvement scheme for the Yunlong town, presently undertaken by the highways department, is a good example. Some of the medium and minor improvement works have already been completed, involving the widening of existing footpaths, uh, straightening of pedestrian crossings, and implementation of no stopping restrictions on vehicles. We have also proposed to construct a footbridge of around 520 kilometers long along the Yunlong Tang Lola, connecting Westway Longping Station in the north to Martin Road in the south to serve as a strategic north-south pedestrian route. Many of you should have been to the Soho district uh, using the hillside escalator in central district. Now you may like to know that the administration is also taking forward similar projects in other areas of Hong Kong upon uh, suggestions, requests from the local communities. For example, the Center Street escalator system, which is under construction and will be in operation by the third quarter of this year. The pedestrian link at Chiwan San has been included in the Sha Tin to Central Link project for completion by phases between 2014 and 2016. Also, the pedestrian link system at Yutwa Street will be implemented in relation to the Guntong Chang Center redevelopment for completion in 2015. But of course, uh, not all proposed hillside escalator systems are technically feasible or indeed financially justifiable. And not all are welcomed by the local communities. For example, there is local opposition to a proposed project in Pang Lane, uh, and this, of course, will involve uh, more extensive public engagement so as to gauge the preference of the local community. There are also dedicated pedestrian schemes. Since 2000, the Transport Department has implemented more than 70 pedestrian schemes in various parts of Hong Kong, including Causeway Bay, the Central District, Wan Chai, Mong Kok, and Chim Sa Shui. These pedestrian schemes impose different degrees of restriction against vehicle access to provide a more pedestrian-friendly uh, environment. While they are generally welcomed by the public, further introduction of pedestrian schemes is becoming more difficult due to limited road space available for competing needs and also street management considerations. Some local residents and district councils have raised concern about noise and environmental problems created by the pedestrians and on-street promotion activities. So this has highlighted a very important factor in promoting walkability, and that is the support from the community. In my view, a walkable city presupposes a community of people willing to take up walking as one of the regular ways of travel. We need local support introducing pedestrian facilities in specific areas and an efficient public transport system to cover more distant journeys, as well as a systemic vision and design that can free up road space and reduce motorized transport. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, what I have described is of course still 
fall short of what an ideal walkable city should be. For too long, like other big cities, Hong Kong has been laboring hard to cope with motorized transport by building more roads and highways. Yet the number of cars keeps on growing, and traffic congestion and roadside emission worsens. It is indeed time for us all to pause, to rethink the future of our city design and transport planning, and to put pedestrians back on our policy map. When I was a young boy, I lived in Wan Chai, and I went to school every day, every school day, by walking. At that time, every Saturday, I walked to the City Hall Library, because I need space for reading. And I walked to Causeway Bay and Happy Valley for leisure and shopping. So walking to me was so normal. And of course, at that time, road traffic wasn't as busy as now. Now here, I'm not advocating a simple return to the past, but we need a more balanced mobility landscape with good public transport access and pedestrian walkability. Walking enables us to be more observant of our interesting street scenes and to have closer encounter, much closer encounter with people on the streets. A kind of social experience that I think traveling by cars cannot provide. So in a way, walkability or not reflects the pace and character of our city and the pace of our working life, as well as social life. While contemplating workability, we are at the same time reflecting on how our life should be organized, which of course, a much bigger challenge for us all. So in closing, I would like to wish this conference a great success with every participant benefiting from a multi-perspective, cross-disciplinary, and constructive exchange of views and ideas. Thank you very much.